descriptions, our um, role models that we use, and now that we're going to caption scoring, we really should have our score sheet for Dance Troll. So those are all your tools that should be in your toolbox that you want to look at. So when we think of Dance Troll, we think of it's a combination of five elements. So when you look at dance, baton, body movements, with a group of athletes to a set of music. So this is kind of the be all end all. This is where we really want to have a lot of fun, get the athletes out, and really a combination of a number of elements. So what I wanted to do today was to kind of test you visually an appreciation. We heard Amy talk this morning in her book about appreciating different styles, having a different perspective of those different styles, some tactile work with your buttons, and then some knowledge. So when we look at dance troll, the primary focus really is an incorporation of the dance troops in a series coordinated with music. So when we think of this, we think of seeing the music. So I think for me, the biggest challenge is this visual oral. What does that mean? You know, that's that scrunched up face when the athlete or the group is performing and we're like, what are they doing? So what I want you to do, yeah, yeah, so scroll down. So I want you to close your eyes. So this is where you're going to get an appreciation for seeing the music. Now I'm going to play it again. And now I want you to see the music. You've heard it, now I want you to see it. was trying to do with that music, what he was trying to depict. So as we hear the music, try and anticipate what you think you might see or what they're trying to depict here by what the, the fluidity, the motions, and it gives you a perspective. It gives you a vision to match the oral, which is what they're trying to in, in, in capture here. But then as you saw it, you saw different sounds, you saw different tempos, you saw something different within the music, right? That's the, that's the point. I think it would be cool to see as a choreographer because it, when the pieces split away at, at random times, it might not be a note that you would generally 
say, okay, this would be a good point for them to split apart. So I thought that was that's kind of seeing the music. So then when we look, we've got different focuses within dance troll. We've got a, a primary focus and a secondary focus. So when we look at the primary focus, it's really about incorporating the dance steps, as I said, with the series coordinated with the music and the correlation of the music selected and the style of dance. I think that's really important. And as one of my, cha my challenges, it's hard to appreciate different styles, different genres again. When I hear a top 40 type of music or a piece of music that I like and it's being performed, it's really hard for me to appreciate that music. So what I've done here, so now I need to get to the next one, is I've, show, I've picked one piece of music and I've looked at three different genres to that music. And I want you to look at the music differently based on these genres. And it's a bit of a uh, no, it's this one here. Oop. Oh. I don't even know what that was. I should be careful. And this is kind of um, my tribute to Prince. And I think once you could appreciate, not that this is one dimensional, but when you add the layer, a baton twirling and whatnot, there's still a combination. I think you get the picture when you look at it and, and not being a tap dancer, I really had an appreciation for what they were able to do with that music. And even the syncing of the tapping with the music, that's how they were highlight uh, those aspects. So now we're going to move on to this one. Yeah, the dance one. I want you to pay attention to what this does to your body when you're watching this performance. How your body reacts to it. Okay, so the first time I saw that, when they changed the tempo, I got goosebumps. You know, I think it really drew me into the routine when you look at um, the different layer that they brought into it, the costuming that it adds to it again. A different tempo of the music, how did, how did you react to it? You were able to see something differently again. They brought out different tones, different layers, different timing of the music, but it was still a, a similar piece of music. And then we've got our last one, baton. No baton, I'm just gonna do the baton. How I found this, I have no idea, so I was...
Okay, it breaks down from there, so we can stop it here. So that one wasn't really about the, the quality of the performance, but again, to show that as we add baton, it creates another element of difficulty that you have to consider. So they weren't able, they, I don't, didn't think they were as expressive uh, utilizing that music. It, it, was, it was very the, the basic gate counts and whatnot. But hopefully what that showed you, again, is being open to, now that you can see the music, see it differently see it differently through different genres. Uh, try not to get caught up. I know sometimes I can get caught up in, in the music. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. No. This? This? Yeah. No, 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 no. This is just a, no, no. This was just an illustration. I think what I wanted to show was an illustration. No, no, no. no. But more so about opening your mind to appreciating different types of music that are out there. Different selections and how that music can be interpreted. So it wasn't, this wasn't about concept or whatnot. It was just to show you continuing with when we look I at... Think it probably, I think it probably was. Yeah, this? Yeah, I this think wasn't probably. bad. This wasn't bad. It was starting. No, no, I meant, I didn't mean that it wasn't bad. I think I, it was probably entered in to the dance world vision. This, I'm assuming, but like I said, I, I don't know how I like, This was like 2012, so it probably was. But I think what it was more was about that style of dance. So... Um, I'm not a dancer, so I think when, when we look at our role models, it's very dance But be open to, you're going to see different, different styles of dance and whatnot, so be open to it and really think, how does that coordinate to the music, right? That's, that's the, the concept of dance troll is the musicality and what they're doing to bring that music alive, and we had talked about that when you talked about your freestyle selection of music. So the next one is kind of your secondary considerations, um, looking at form and design. And so this one I, I'm also challenged when we have small groups and big groups. So that comes to your buttons on your table. So what I want you to do, thanks Amy, that was it for the, is, oops, sorry, is we're gonna start with uh, five buttons. And what you've got is you've got 45 seconds. You can, and that's what you use the little blue cards for is it doesn't matter you're going to make as many shapes and forms as you can and the buttons are a bit of a metaphor to athletes athletes come in different sizes and shapes and so when you look at the buttons they different sizes and shapes pick five and create uh, forms as many forms as you can and just count them Think about how easy it is. Think of your spacing. Think of the creativity with five. Just counting. You're at 30 seconds. And stop. How many did you guys get to? 15. 15? 16? Who said I'm seeing some higher numbers. Okay, give yourself some space. Now in your bag you got 20. So what you're going to do, same exercise but with 20. As many forms as you can in 45 seconds with 20 buttons. Ready, set, go. You've got to move them around, right? Exactly. Too many sizes. Some of my team members are going to have to leave. No. No comment. No comment on size, shape, or color. Baton twirling. We support diversity. So you're at uh, 35. Uh, oop, no, five seconds left. Okay, stop. Where's how many? Four. Eight. But we were double digits with a five. We were single digits. So what were some of your challenges moving from five to 20? What were some of your challenges? 
Transitions, different size. What, what else did you have? Layering? Okay. You got up to eight, so you were pretty fast. Yeah. I did major circle, minor circle. Um, I did feature twirler group over here. I said minute, I did a diagonal, I did straight line, I did two So I hope yeah. you can appreciate that as we heard from Jenna's conversation about team is about creating forms and pictures. Think of the challenges as you go from a smaller group and then precision and unison, just even in the line coordination. And now think of the transitions to get there. So as we increase from level to a beginner to a more advanced, we think about those transitions. We think about the intricacy. So think about that when you just did your little exercise here about how easy it was with five. So think about moving five. Think about the uniformity. You were probably able to pick five buttons that all look the same. But now with 20, it was harder. Think of those challenges and think of the challenges from a choreographer's perspective. So this really is about appreciating maybe sometimes a limited variety in a bigger group, but still having the musicality, thinking about how they're gonna get transition from one form to another. So any other comments or? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I was looking for bingo chips, and then I saw the buttons. I was like, "Hey, I'm going to use I'm going to use buttons because buttons were were a good metaphor, I think." Okay, the last exercise because now we're going to caption scoring. I think it's important for us to um, kind of have a sense on the score sheet, kind of similar to what Catherine did. So pull out your card, and we're going to have a little bit of a test. So we know on our um, score sheet there's twirl dance general effect and production. So I'm gonna test your mind. I am going to say a word, a series of words, and I want you to tell me what caption is it in. Twirl, dance, GE, or production. Dance, GE, and production. Exchanges. No, 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 put on your paper. Put on your paper, we'll have a little bit of competition at the end. And there's 10. So second one, so first one's exchanges. Second one is entertainment value. Third one is body technique. Four is transitions. Transitions. Five, skill of recovery. Four, visual and oral agreement. Seven, variety of forms. Eight is staging. Nine, uniformity of execution. 10, skill level maintained. Uniformity of execution. So you can do your own corrections and then see where you got, and I'll explain. Uh, last one was skill level maintained. Okay, number one was twirl exchanges, you'll find in the twirl caption. Number two, entertainment value, GE. Body technique, dance. Transitions, production. Gill of Recovery, Twirl, Visual and Oral Agreement, GE, Variety of Forms, Production, Staging, GE, Uniformity of Execution, Dance, Skill Level Maintained, Twirl. So hopefully you got a sense because now instead of the eight, nine, and 10 was GE, Dance, and Twirl. So what does that say? I think it's important as we move to caption judging that when we look at our dance role teams that we're taking those into account and we're really kind of factoring those in when we start to compare one dance role team to another. Who excels in one category? Who doesn't? Because I think that's the whole point moving towards a caption scoring. We used to do it that way. We went to a global score. And I think what we recognize as judges is we thought one group was better in GE over production. One better was, was better at dance and twirl. It really is about that whole package and that's what you'll see on the role model. But really we wanted to articulate what the differences were between those scores so that we could our score would be reflective the importance that we placed or the, or the strengths that. So I don't know if that was, that was the conclusion of my presentation. So.